Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Haven't seen you for a while. Oh, I've still got my limiter on. I'm still on 30 miles an hour. I thought I was getting to work slowly. So, what a lovely day in paradise. Low white cloud, good light for photography. And uh, on my way to work again. Wednesday today, very busy day yesterday. Quieter today. So just still quiet. So um, we're looking at ways to sort of drum up a bit more business. Our biggest problem is we're off the beaten track. We're in, a, in, an, in an innovation center. And so we've absolutely no footfall. And by the time everybody who's a patient is has been cured and you know had all the grounds and bridges that they need and told all their friends, <coughs> then um, we don't. Uh, I think uh, acquiring new patients is our lifeblood. You know, our, our oxygen. And uh, what we've done is we've uh, probably neglected that a bit. You know, I hadn't really. I uh, you know being a bit old school, I sort of tend to rely more on things like Google. Uh, word of mouth recommendation and stuff like that and really that's been good enough that and a um, oh, it used to be a yellow pages advert didn't it and uh, but that was more to validate the practice it wasn't that people would sort of come to see you because of a yellow pages advert what, had, what would happen was people would say oh go and see old uh, angry he's a good dentist and they would just look look you up in the yellow pages to try and find you and if you were in there then you were kosher and if you weren't then they wanted to know who the hell you were. So, let me get my wing mirrors in because these nutters. When you drive down country lanes a lot, you know, you you realise that there are there are people who also drive down country lanes a lot and you get past them without any trouble at all and then you get, then you get the people who are perhaps in their partner's car or they're in a big car and they don't really know how wide it is or they're not used to driving down country lanes and they just basically they drive a foot or two further over than they should do, you know, you should be really, if you haven't got any grass on your wing mirror on the left by the time you get to work, then you're driving too far into the middle and then of course there's the other thing is you, you always meet the occasional bus or lorry or something coming down here and so usually around a corner, you know, give you a nice surprise test out the old reactions, your emergency stop <coughs> So we're thinking about ways to uh, boost traffic and obviously the way that, you know, the, the first word that springs into everybody's mind when you talk about uh, marketing and, and recruitment, you know, and uh, getting more patients is um, advertising. Oh, you should advertise. And believe me, I have tried every single type of advert. Every, I've tried everything. I've tried uh, having a stall at the local uh, shopping centre giving away free toothbrushes. I've uh, tried a uh, helium balloon uh, release in liaison with the local paper and uh, where we put uh, business cards attached to helium balloons and let them off all over the place. Oh yeah, there's nothing we haven't tried. Leaflet drops, you name it. And I've got to tell you, none of it works. None of it works. The uh, the only things that do work are, you know, quite unobtrusive small adverts that are perhaps appear in a local paper on a, on a, on a long, over a long term, you know. But that's quite difficult to sort of stomach the fact that you might have to pay 100, 150 pounds a week every week for a year uh, for an advert before it starts to work. You know, it's quite that's quite tricky. Anyway. What we're doing, because we are sort of pioneering and we're at the forefront of various types of practice development, so I'm thinking, are there any other uh, ways that things are done which we could disintermediate, you know, which we could sort of uh, ready for, for a step, a paradigm step forwards? Uh, and remember, we did dentures in a day, so we do dentures in a day because dentures don't need to take uh, four weeks or six weeks or whatever. So that was one thing. Then we've the uh, second thing, most recent thing was the reception free practice. Because we realised that receptionists are, you know, they used to maintain these massive great ledgers of patients and nobody really knew. If someone said when's my next appointment, only the receptionist would know that. And uh, recall letters have been replaced with recall emails and uh, people don't 
ring in anymore much. They, they email in, you know, and expect a quick reply to their email because their email's on their phone now. It's not even like the old days when their email was on their PC and they used to pick it up once or twice a day if they weren't, if they didn't have email at work. Where, you know, the only time they would do quick email was was if they were at work and they had it on their work PC and then even then they didn't expect. It was like one day they would email you, the next day you would email them. That's because they would give you the chance to come over in the evening, pick up the email and reply to it. Now it's all on the mobile phone. So it's like, I've emailed you, why, why you've got, obviously you got the email, why haven't you emailed me back, you know? And you get a, a plethora of these uh, emails saying, did you get my last email? <laughs> Yes, because if I hadn't, you would have got a message saying this couldn't be delivered. It was obviously delivered, you know. So, receptionist free practice. Now I'm thinking I'm casting my, my casting my mind around and thinking what else, what else, what else would we do? And we've decided to have a serious look at implants. And again, implants is something that hasn't really changed since you know Brandon Mark invented them. Basically, they're slow, expensive, and and supposedly difficult and yet when I say to people uh, it's as easy to put in an implant as it is to screw a rule plug in a wall um, I am honestly I honestly believe that I do honestly believe that putting an implant in is one of the easiest jobs I would probably rather put an implant in than do an MOD restoration or, or a crown you know etc etc it should be so easy to put implants in. They are so advanced these days. They're so biocompatible that the uh, the uh, morphology of the implants is so well understood. They're so well packaged. The uh, we understand the, the the speed, the whole preparation, the saline drip. It's all integrated now into these single unit uh, drills, implant drills. The costs have come down. You can get an implant drill for a couple of grand now. Whereas. I don't know whether, you know, how much they used to cost, but the point is that it's, they're not, that is not, you know, out of the reach of any dentist now, just to get an implant drill. And then to set up, to buy 15 implants, 15 healing caps, and get to cover, get, get the prosthetic kit and the placement kit thrown in is another two grand. So you're looking at four grand to set up, yeah? And you can probably, if you sort of uh, start advertising implants and you get two or three people who want implants to pay you up front, then really that's your upfront costs all covered, isn't it? Uh, so, so the way the thinking is going, we've looked at the implant costs, and again, you know, you might think, oh well, I mean, okay, let's start from the beginning. What is the current situation? The current situation is that. Uh, implants are costing around 1400 1500 pounds 1200 14 1500 pounds something like that and then you've got the crown on top so really you're not going to get much change out of 2000 quid this is per per implant per crown uh, implant supporting crown and people ring up and say how much is an implant and we used to say well it's about 1400 quid and then but then you've got your crown on top of that so they say well why did why did you say 1400 quid why don't you just say 2000 you know because who wants an implant without a crown? You know, what, who's, what idiot's going to ring up and say, oh, I just like the implant, really. Uh, don't worry about the crown on the top, just give me the implant. Thanks very much. You know, and these people get quite annoyed and aerated about the way that we do it. Even though, you know, I try and explain it is modular and you might not have a crown on it, you might have a bridge or it might, might support your denture or something like that. So, anyway, there we go. So we've got 1,400 plus about 600, so 2,000. Two now, looking at the costs, okay? Now, let's just say for the sake of argument that you've got some free appointments. If you're, if you're, booked, up till, if you're booked up three months ahead, then this probably won't be of quite so much interest to you. But um, let's assume that you've got some time to place implants. And let's assume that they don't take too long, because again, that's the other, the implant woo is that the whole thing is, is dressed up, isn't it? Like something out of Dr. Kildare. And you drape everything, including the walls, and the whole thing, you have to shut the surgery for the morning, etc., etc. So let's just take that, let's just get rid of that presupposition, okay? For, you know, because we're, we're, we're thinking out of the box here, okay? This is, this is blue sky thinking here. We're running ideas at the flagpole to see if they flap, okay? So, so 
let's just look at the cost. Your, your cost for your implant, let's say 15 implants and healing caps, uh, 150 quid each, um, tops. And then uh, you've got 15 crowns, let's say 100 tops, probably nearer 60, but, but 100 tops. Uh, including abutments so you're looking at about 250 uh, in basic uh, direct costs you know for a crown and then you've got uh, the surgery time and the dentist time on top of that so you've got some indirect but let's supposing that uh, your surgery is not 100% utilized and and whose surgery is 100% utilized who who doesn't have some spare time or even if they don't have some spare time who doesn't have a spare chair you know so let's assume that you're you that you're you, there's an opportunity a cost associated with having a, nobody in the practice so you're losing money because your chair's empty and you can't sell an appointment for yesterday so Let's just for one side, just put aside the the issue of what the dentist is going to get paid to do the work and uh, and uh, and the and the cost of the staff and stuff like that. Okay, just to make things easier. So there you are. You're looking at what did I say about 150 for the implant and about 100 for the crown. So 250, and we're charging 2,000, right? I'll just say that again and get the math. So 250 costs and we're charging 2,000, right? And this is why people want to do implants because this, the profit margin on them is eight times. So you're, this is why your guy who's an implant, this is why I got a patient yesterday who said, we've got, he said, I've got a failed post crown and uh, the dentist says he can't do anything with it. So I'm going to need to have an implant. And we have successfully done bridges on people who had been told that they, they only, their only option was an implant, you know. And we have successfully done replaced post crowns on crowns where the patient was told that it was beyond repair and the only thing that they could have was an implant. And when you consider that the profit on each implant is 1750 compared to the profit on a crown or the profit on an extraction and a plastic denture, whatever, 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 you can see why, why to a hammer everything looks like a nail, can't you? To an implantologist everything looks like it needs an implant. So where's the opportunity, right? Where's the arbitrage in this? Where can we, where can we come in and disintermediate? What we're going to be doing is we're going to be disintermediating the, uh, the implantologists, the existing implantologists. And I think, and I've got this from uh, when I went abroad, we was looking at marketing, you know, you pick up dentist leaflets and stuff, they, over in, over in uh, you know, Spain, Italy, that, they, they leave them everywhere, leave them in public toilets, they leave their leaflets everywhere. And one of these leaflets said, uh, Crown Todo Inclusivo, right? That means everything included, in case you're wondering. Todo Inclusivo, 999 euros and I am you know your first your initial response to that is my what my response was to, uh, years and years and years ago to this guy called Ed Silker who came over and said that you could gross <coughs> a million dollars single-handed in his book the million dollar solo dental practice and my reaction, initial reaction, and everybody's subsequent reaction was the work he does must be crap. To turn over, I mean, this is a time when we were trying to turn over 40,000 quid a year, and he was turning over a million dollars. I mean, you know, probably, you know, even for the, allowing for the dollar pound conversion rate, you can see that there was an order of magnitude difference in terms of earnings. So, when you look at a Spanish leaflet that offers an implant and crown complete for 999 euros, your first thought, of course, is that must be complete crap. My God, what, what, what are they doing? What are they using? What are they doing? Are they doing the old NHS trick of putting paper clips in, in, uh, in, in crowns, you know, instead of posts and cords using paper clips or, or or uh, uh, those bloody dentators, what are they called? The screw things, the, 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 the copperized screws. You know, what are they doing? 
But when you look at the actual cost of £250 for an for a implant supported crown, you can see how it can be done, can't you? You can see how it can be done. And let's say, for the sake of argument, that we advertise these things for £999. 900, not, you know, euros, pounds. Then, oh, well, bloody euros, is about the same as a pound, isn't it? Then, then, that's going to revolutionise implants, isn't it? Now, now you're going to say, oh, yeah, 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 all right, what's here? The first one you're going to get is going to be some bloody difficult 90 year old with a, you know, sinuses down, is, is, is open into their, their maxillas open into their mouth and blah, blah, blah. And, well, it's going to be an upper central. Uh, an upper central where you know they're very 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 conscious about appearance and stuff like that to which my answer will be no those I am not going to do I'm not proposing that those could or should be done for 999 quid I'm talking about the, the premolars the, just the missing back teeth the missing lower teeth the missing lower front teeth you know the ones the, one, the rule plugs what I call the rule plugs <laughs> The ones where you can get the patient in, and and just and get them numb, and make a sterile hole and screw a raw plug in, you know, and then say right off you go. Then and I know this is going to run up against a lot of resistance because I went to an LDC conference once, and they were talking about this is when they were talking about extending the. Um, length of the dental syllabus from five years to five years plus you know five years in a term or was it five years in a term plus vocational training or something and uh, someone stood up and said look you know this is getting ridiculous you know you, you academics you're getting out of hand you're uh, yeah 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 you're, you shouldn't drive if you're half blind so you know this this these terms are getting too long and, and, and because it was a conference of, you know, because there's a lot of academics there at the LDC conference and they're all, they're all dead for this because it's empire building, isn't it? And, they, and someone from the academic side said, well, look, you know, if you're going to tell us to cut down on the syllabus, on, on the syllabus length, you've got to tell us what you can take out of the syllabus. <clears throat> you know, tell us, what, tell us what dentists don't need to know. You know, God, I challenge you. Do they, what do we take out? Do we take out crowns? Do we take out bridges? Do we take out the study of aardvark teeth? Yeah, yeah. But you know, and and they th and he thought that was an end to the end to the argument. But then I stood up and I said, look, my daughter's uh, in flight training at the moment. I said she's got she doesn't have the academic qualifications to get into university into dental school. I said, but in in nine months' time, she'll be able to fly as a co-pilot on a 737. So, and you're telling me that a co that a co-pilot on a 737 has any less responsibility, or a job that's in any way easier than a dentist? And oh, oh, did they not like that? I mean, did they not like that? You know, I'm saying why? Why, effectively, I'm saying why do you take five years to do something that everyone else does in nine months? And this is the this is what the implantologists are going to say. They're going to say no, 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 no. G gowns, gowns, sterile packs, drapes. You know, and yet when you do a surgical extraction, you don't drape up. And I tell you, there's more chance of of causing problems with the infection with a a difficult surgical extraction where you have to raise a flat, remove bone, divide the roots, elevate the roots, etc., etc. I'd say there's at least as much chance of a surgical uh, infection complication with that sort of job as there is well, there is just sticking in a rule plug that probably takes five minutes and doesn't involve any trauma, any bleeding, uh, you know, or any <laughs> or any sort of digging about. <laughs> so this is this is why people don't like me. You know, I can see why they don't like me because I do tend to sort of you know pull the rug away from the established interests. Anyway, so that's my latest idea, the £999 fully inclusive implant, which takes away the fear of cost as well, you see, because the patient's not, the patient's not uh, worried about cost because they're not saying, oh yeah, oh yeah, but you haven't added in that, have you? And I say, yeah, I have. I've added everything. That's everything. 
I don't, you don't have to worry about whether or not there's, you know, you don't, I don't tell you that there's an implant and then there's a crown. Oh, but by the way, there's an abutment. You've got to pay an extra for an abutment. Oh, by the way, oh yeah. And then of course there's extra for the stent. And then there's extra for the first implant because we have to have a drape kit. Yeah, this is it. Fully inclusive, fully inclusive. Don't pay anything more. You, you, you uh, come in, you get your implant. Three months later, you get your crown. 999, fully inclusive. And uh, it's going to cost me about 250 quid to do it. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'll let you know. I'll keep you up to date. Don't you do it. Don't you nick my idea. All right. Okay. See you soon. Bye.